Okay, um, Jay Chinandra, and thank you all so much for joining us on today's YJ webinar on navigating college life. My name is Dara Balani, and I will be one of your hosts today. Um, so I'm a senior at the University of Georgia, and this is Charmi Shah, who will be co-hosting with me. So Jay Chinandra, everybody, um, my name is Charmi. I'm a junior at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. Um, studying public health and minoring in Spanish. Um, so thank you all for joining. As Dara said, we're super excited. Um, today, our session will be structured into five parts. So in the first hour, we'll be touching on transitioning from high school to campus life. Um, our second section is ways to get involved on campus. Um, and then we'll be finishing out with pre-professional opportunities that you can pursue in college, um, as well as how to stay connected in Jainism while in college. Um, so afterwards, we'll be setting you up in breakout rooms for you to interact with all the different panelists and ask them any questions you have. Um, and that means like during the webinar, we will not be answering any questions, but we will have a Slido link open so you can put those in at any time and the panelists will be answering them after. Um, so yeah, let's get started. And Rupal, if you can send the Slido link in the chat, that would be awesome. Awesome. Okay, so one day you're living with your parents, they're calling your name from downstairs to come eat Rodli Darbat Shak, and you're getting your laundry folded by your mom, and the next day you're eating dining hall cardboard pizza, and you're wearing your three-week-old washed jeans, unwashed jeans, and you're running to your 8 a.m. I have literally been there before. Shale and Bumika are here to tell us a little bit more about how they have navigated the tidal waves of college campus life. So our first question to Shale and Bumika, um, would you guys please start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and how transitioning from high school to college was, especially with you, Shale, moving to a college in a much bigger city and Bumika having a college town feel? Um, absolutely. Jason there, everyone. Uh, I am Shale. I'm currently a sophomore at Northeastern studying finance and accounting. So when it comes to college, I had a bit of a roundabout way of getting to Boston where my college is. Uh, for my first semester, I had a choice of 13 different cities around the world to study in, and I chose to go to school in London. So the, the city itself was our uh, campus, was our classroom. Uh, the first day there, I remember my three roommates and I, who I didn't know from all around this, the, the country and the world, really, we realized that we need to find a supermarket, because if we didn't find a supermarket, we were gonna go hungry because there was no meal plan. There was no mama to make us some table real quick with the, um, and none of us knew how to cook. So we got a five pound bag of pasta and that's all we ate for lunch and dinner for about the first two weeks. Um, awesome. Um, Bumika, would you be able to answer that question? But uh, you have to be ready to make Google Maps Jason, everyone. Um, my name is Pumika. I'm a senior studying computer science at University of Michigan. Um, I'm almost done. My last exam is on Wednesday, and then I'm graduated. Um, and transitioning to college life, I know it's like it's really a big transition between like a lot of time management stuff. So you know, in in high school, it's like after school go home you do your homework you have your tests stuff like that but then like college is more like you don't really have to go to class if you don't want to you have to do all your homework on your own time and all the homework is like if there's not like homework due every day it's like a bunch of stuff due you know every month and stuff like that so you have to really make sure to like allot your time wisely um and then, yeah, meal dining hall is for vegetarians. It's um, sometimes you just have to eat fries and pizza every day, which sounds fun, but it's not always the best. But, you know, over time, you find out which place, it, like which dining halls have better food and like what you can make at home or what you can make in your microwave. And so it gets easier from there. Absolutely. Sorry, um, Shale, I think you cut off right when you were talking about uh, the tablas and how meals are kind of difficult. Um, so could you just finish and wrap that up and then we'll go into the next question. Absolutely. Um, so it goes from mom being able to make you tepla and day um, 
to not really knowing what you're going to do for your next meal. And so you got to learn to make Google Maps and City Map for your best friend and go from there. Cool. And then in terms of transitioning into college and dorm life, it's just, it's more of the same. It's understanding that you need to maybe prep your meals, um, balance out the time you're going to spend socializing with folks with when you're going to do your work, um, as well as if you got to grind for 16 hours on a Sunday in order to make your club commitments. Um, so be it. Awesome, thank you for that. So going off of that question, what was it like to make new friends as you transitioned into college and dorm life? Um, uh, absolutely. Um, so it's pretty interesting and it's just about joining commitments that you can find yourself And Pumika, for you? Um, so I know a lot of people will go into college with like some friends from high school. Um, I think it's great to keep friendships from high school. It's awesome, but some people kind of use that as an excuse to not meet new people, which I think is something that you really should do because um, definitely keep your friendships, but also in college you meet so many new people and a lot of the pe new people that I met are like, I talk to them every day for the past four years and like, I'm so glad that I did meet them. And I think one of the best ways to make friends is in your dorm. Um, I just, just keep your door open and like, just be friendly. And, you know, I remember one time, maybe it was like the second day, there was just a bunch of people in the hallway. And so my roommate and I were just like, do you guys want to play mafia? And like, those are the same people that I'm best friends with today. So. Um, dorm is a great way to make friends and just like even if you don't know someone just being nice and asking them if you want to go check out this area with me or something like that um that's a great way to make make new friends great okay um so our next question is how did you guys balance with keeping up with the higher level of academics compared to high school and figuring out what you wanted to pursue as a major and also career-wise Um, absolutely. So I chose Northeastern because a part of my academics is figuring out my career. We're known for our co-op program. So uh, currently I'm taking a whole semester and a half off and working full time at a company uh, just so I can understand and get to know what it's like being in a professional environment and also learning on the job. So there's a steep learning curve attached, but I'm fortunate that you're surrounded in kind of a controlled environment just as a classroom would be, except it's at an actual working career. Uh, so you can dip your toes in the water before you have to commit to any sort of specific career path. Um, I'll talk a little bit about like balancing things. Um, so balancing, you know, like making friends and hanging out with friends and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of that is doing things early like when you get assignments try to finish them like early do things throughout the day rather than like keeping it for like the night because I feel like that's when people want to hang out everyone's on classes but like doing things between classes and like stuff like that um, and then freshman year I think is a great time to take classes in different um, like subjects and topics if you don't know what you want to do um, usually in college you have to get certain amount of credits um, like for your distribution so like credits outside your major and so freshman year is a great time to just try to take a bunch of different classes that still give you the credit you need but also like do like a bunch of random different things and then you might find out that what you thought you wanted to do isn't exactly what you want to do and something else is even cooler so um, that's a great way to kind of find out what you really want to go into. Absolutely. I know that freshman year is like a lot of learning process and like learning by trial is a major part of the process. So it was great to hear about that. Um, I have one more kind of interesting question for you guys. Um, so during the process, especially with adjusting to college, um, what was it like for you guys coming home to visit and like, you know, figuring out the balance of when to come home versus when you want to stay on campus. 
Um, so first semester, it was a little hard to come back just because I was an ocean away. So I, I'd say you discover that it's going to be a matter of Thanksgiving, maybe the body, um, that you come home, Christmas break, and otherwise, it's also just easy to have the same meals your family, zoom in, and just have dinner together as a family if you can't make the time commitment of coming home. Um, and that's something that I've discovered works great for us. So it's an option. <laughs> um, for me, so I was just 30 minutes away from my house because um, I'm from Farmington Hills. It's just like really close to U of M. So um, I usually would do like, depending on what stuff, like what activities I had at college, I usually do like every other week, come home over the weekend and just like hang out with my family. But I feel like that's just, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever works for you, making time at home. So yeah, I feel like it's different for everyone. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys so much, Shailen Bumika. It was really great to hear from y'all about the whole process of adjusting to college life. Um, so now I'm gonna hand it off to Charmy to talk about college involvement. Yeah, thanks, Dara, and thanks, Shailen Bumika. Um, so one of the most memorable parts of college is definitely your extracurricular experiences. Um, so we wanted to take some time to talk to Juhi, Nihar, Mansi, and Saloni, who've done a little bit of it all. Um, so Juhi, Nihar, Mansi, and Saloni, you have all been involved with so many different extracurriculars and clubs. Um, so would you mind quickly introducing yourself and telling us more about the on-campus clubs that you've been involved with, um, as well as like how you determined it was something that you wanted to continue with throughout college. Um, so Juhi, if you want to go first. Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Juhi Nahada. I'm a third year biomedical engineering major with a management minor at Georgia Tech. Um, I'm originally from Michigan. And so for me, some of the things that I was really involved with throughout college um, well, I did research my freshman year, but I also joined a dance team. Um, I joined Georgia Tech's Garba and Ross team my freshman year, and I've been on it um, all three years so far. Um, I was also involved with this organization called A-Town Showdown. They host um, a Bollywood Fusion and Garba Ross competition at Georgia Tech. So um, I decided to be a liaison for it one year, and then the year after that, I was on the executive board for it, and this year I'm the director for it now. Um, so for me, the reason why, well, I heard about all of these clubs through like our, our orientation um, org fair type thing. Um, I basically just saw all of these booths. I knew that I wanted to somehow stay in touch with like my Indian culture while I was at college. Um, and I'd heard really good things about being on a dance team, the experiences that you get, and especially being from Michigan, I knew like one person going into Georgia Tech. So I knew that I wanted, um, I needed a way to find, I needed a way to make friends. And I thought like being able to do that while also embracing my culture would be a great way to do so. So that's how I decided to join the dance team. And I never thought that I would stay on it all three years. Um, I decided to give it a go one year and then I really enjoyed it. Like the friendships I made, the bonds that I made through that, I really enjoyed all of that. So that's how I knew that's something I, I wanted to continue throughout college. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, Nihar, do you want to go next? Hi, guys. My name is Nihar Gandhi. I am a junior at Yale studying uh, environmental studies and statistics and data science. Um, aside from academics, I'm involved with a couple of athletic groups. Um, I'm on the rugby team. I'm on the club squash team. Um, and then I also uh, like to spend my time like volunteering around New Haven. Um, there are a couple of groups that I've joined, um, like consulting uh, organizations that help local New Haven startups, and then also just some organizations that volunteer with the local food banks. Um, I've also spent a lot of my time um, as like a first year counselor through um, one of our outdoor orientation programs. Um, through that, we get to take uh, freshmen on hiking trips going into um, like before they come into their first year. Uh, I just got involved with it because that's a trip that I had done my first year. Um, ended up making a lot of really great friends from it. And um, the chance to lead it has been fantastic. Um, last year, I took a group of like eight through the White Mountains. Um, it was super beautiful. 
and uh, we had a great time. And then hopefully permitting um, like the COVID situation, I get to lead another trip in August. But yeah, um, that's, that's mostly been what I've been involved with. Um, kind of had like a weird uh, path to a lot of clubs, but it's, it's been fulfilling and um, I couldn't imagine my college experience without any of them. Yeah, that sounds super cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, Monsi, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Monsi Shah. I'm from New Jersey. I'm currently a senior at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, and I'm going to be graduating in a few weeks uh, with a degree in cell biology and neuroscience and a certificate in women's leadership. So a lot of the clubs that I've joined, um, I would say I got involved with them pretty early on. So my first year I joined um, this organization called GlobeMed, and um, I'm currently the co-president of that org. Um, we essentially focus on promoting health equity. So we do that through like a partnership model with a local and an international organization. Um, and because I'm also pre-med and applying to med schools, um, I think that organization has allowed me to see healthcare from a social justice lens, which has been really important to me. Um, additionally, I wanted to volunteer during college and I was looking for different opportunities um, and the one that really stood out to me um, my first year is this sort of called PD Green um, and it's a program that allows college students to volunteer at local jails and prisons and so I became you know really committed to that organization. I tutored at a women's correctional facility in Jersey for about a year and a half um, and then I realized that I, I loved um, learning from that setting so much that I decided to uh, learn more about healthcare in the correctional facility setting. And so a lot of the, a lot of my time the last few years has been spent learning more about that field. Um, I'm a member of the Honors College at Rutgers. So I've been working closely with some of the deans to, you know, um, establish this program at Rutgers that allows my peers to also participate in a similar program, um, interning physicians and healthcare professionals. Um, and it's been really great. So I think a lot of the programs and, and clubs that I've been a part of. Um, they do align with my career interests, but um, also looking at things from an interdisciplinary lens and, and really, um, really enjoying the, the things that I'm involved with. Yeah, thank you for sharing. That's super insightful. Um, and then Saloni, do you want to go? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I graduated last May from the University of Illinois, and I studied business. Um, one thing that I think is important to highlight about campus involvement is when I was a freshman, I really wanted to be on a dance team. That's like who I thought I was going to be in college. Um, but what is unique about college is sometimes you have to apply for orgs or audition for things. So I didn't make it my freshman year. And I think it's okay to recognize that like something you're really interested in high school and the things you think you're going to be involved in, they might change. So if you don't get into that original club, that might like enable you to do other things. So some things that I was involved with in college, uh, I was a business major, so I was in a business fraternity, and I'm also really interested in film and creative things. So I joined the film club and this org called Design for America that's all about human-centered design. And I think one thing that's really cool about college and campus involvement is there's an opportunity for you to bring your own ideas and perspectives. So for example, in the film club, I I had ideas based on what I saw in the business world, so I could incorporate that to make that culture good. So I think even if you're a freshman or a sophomore, you can always look for opportunities to make these organizations even better and bring your unique perspective. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point that like, even though you guys are involved with so many things and in college, like, if you don't find something that you're looking for, like you could always start it. So thank you for sharing that. Um, a follow-up question I had for you. So I know that you've studied abroad in college. Um, can you share more about your experience on that? Um, and just advice is like how you decided that you wanted to study abroad and how you decided where you wanted to go. Yeah, so I think one of the best pieces of advice I can give about studying abroad is to think about it from the day you set foot on campus, if you can, because I have friends who I feel like sophomore year, junior year, if they thought they wanted to study abroad, then they felt like it was too late or their classes didn't match up. So I think planning is a huge part about making that possible. And because I knew from high school that like, this is something I want to do, it allowed me to, to plan in that direction. And in terms of where I wanted to go, I think I just really want to go to Asia because um, I don't know, just pick a continent, Asia, Europe, or Australia or anything, but I wanted to go to Asia. And uh, talking to people really helped to decide 
based on like the places they've traveled to. And I think uh, instead of focusing on the place, it's better to think about the experience you want to have. So do you want your study ex broad experience to teach you something? Then maybe go somewhere that like you don't know anything about. Or do you want to really be pushed out of your comfort zone? Then go to a place that, so don't think, I would say like, don't think about the place. Think about how you want your experience to shape you and then figure out what city or country you think will do that the best. That's really good advice, thank you. Um, so a follow-up question that we have for you, Monsi. Um, I know you've said that you've had many leadership positions, not only in clubs, but things that you've been outside of um, as well, like even with administrative, administrative positions on campus. Um, so can you tell us more about how you got involved with these positions and your experiences with them? Yeah, definitely. So I think for me, I started off as a general member of the org, as a lot of us do when we join for the first time. Um, and I think for me, I really, you know, wanted to play a more active role in those organizations. So um, it was great that a lot of the senior members were receptive to feedback or new ideas. Um, so that's one piece of advice that I would definitely have about when you go about joining a new club is don't be afraid to provide your input because um, that feedback is really valuable. You're coming into the org with, you know, a, um, a fresh perspective. And so that was really helpful because I was able to build, you know, um, contribute my ideas and work up into these leadership roles. Um, and for some of the administrative related positions, um, I think that I really uh, valued networking when it came to going to events and speaking to people and having good relationships with um, individuals on campus. Um, so this past fall, I was able to serve on a search committee for the new president of Rutgers University. Um, and that was a, a pretty cool experience because I um, I'm not part of student government or anything like that, but I at least got to see, you know, how it is um, having a student perspective be valued. Um, and I think a lot of campuses really do appreciate that. So, yeah, I think that ultimately it comes down to voicing your opinion. Um, if you see, if you have an idea, um, being able to share it with the e-board of an organization. Um, and if you're interested in having a leader, leadership position, showing your commitment, um, because it's definitely possible and, and worth it if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, I think it's super cool to be able to give back to the organizations that have given so much to you. So leadership positions are definitely a great way to do that. So thank you. Um, Nihar, moving on to a follow-up question that we had for you. So you've mentioned a lot of things that you've been involved in, um, but in addition to that, I know that you've also been involved with Greek life on campus. Um, so how did you know that that was something that you wanted to pursue and that how has your experience been with it overall so far? Yeah, um, I think, I think Greek life varies from campus to campus. So obviously take everything that I say with like a grain of salt. Um, I think coming into college, I like wasn't planning on joining um, a Greek organization, um, mainly just because in the Southeast um, where I'm from, it's a little bit more intense. Um, it's a little bit more time consuming. And so that was kind of my preconception of Greek life coming into college. Um, but then once I stepped foot on campus, I just figured out that it was so, like another group that people joined. It was like a social organization, um, whatever. And yeah, that it, like I, I like the fact that it wasn't all encompassing. I like the fact that it didn't um, occupy everyone's social time um, and that people really prided themselves in having um, having like uh, involvements outside of uh, their fraternity, sorority, whatever. Um, and that was one of the big draws uh, for me. I think it was just the chance to be around like another group of diverse people. Um, I think that Yale in particular does a really good job of attracting um, people of all different types to their Greek organizations. Um, and so that it, it was just, I was curious my first year um, and I think that I got a really great experience out of it. Um, I came out of it with like three, four very close friends. And I think that's the mentality that you should go into Greek life with. Don't expect to be best friends with everyone in your class because it's really tough to form those super close relationships with 30, 40 people. Um, but I think if you can come away with it with like two, three really good friends and I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that's pretty much all I have to say about Greek life. Um, if you're considering joining it, 
Um, feel free to ask me about it in the breakout rooms as well. Um, I have both positive and negative things to say about it. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I guess just to quickly address Athman's message in, um, oh, Ripple just did it. But yeah, so I can go ahead. Greek Life does refer to social organizations at colleges and universities in the form of fraternities or sororities. Um, Nihar, do you have anything to add to that, I guess, in just terms of what Greek Life is for someone that's like never even heard about it? Yeah. Um, I, it, it's, it's just like a, um, like a social group for you to join. Um, their core mission is to facilitate, like um, fraternities will say brotherhood, um, sororities will say sisterhood. And their idea is that they're going to create bonds between these individuals um, that last a while. Um, and it's, it's a great way to meet new people, a great way to step out of your comfort zone. Um, and for some people it ends up being great and then for some it doesn't um so i think you just have to ask yourself like what you want out of a social setting um and if greek life is in that then i'd say go for it rush um and just see where it takes you yeah thank you so much for sharing um it's definitely something that is always a decision that people have to make in college. So that was super helpful. So thank you. Um, follow up question for Juhi. Um, you know, we know that you talked about being on a dance team and um, kind of moving up as well and taking leadership positions in that, whether it was being on the team or even a town showdown um, and being co-director next year. Um, so we know that that can be like a huge commitment in terms of traveling and all the time and meetings. Um, so can you elaborate more on your experience of how it's been and how you balance it with your academics? Yeah, definitely. So um, like the dance team I'm on right now, it's called GT Ramblin' Ross and relatively it's less of a time commitment than some of the other dance teams are. There's like a lot of dance teams at Tech. So um, typically we like practice like nine to 10 hours a week, which is considered low commitment compared to the other teams. But yeah, um, I think it's definitely important like before you decide to commit yourself to that, to realize like what you're getting into and like make it very clear with like your captains, like what your expectations are um, and like being able to time manage all of that. So yeah, it was like, especially my first year, it was a little bit of a struggle trying to balance like the rigor of college with a dance team. But I think what's really important to understand is that like you and all of your teammates, like you're all in this together, like they're all taking like very hard classes like you are. So they kind of understand where you're coming from and through that you are able to actually build that like support system um, and like all these friendships that like will last a lifetime. So um, I think mainly the biggest thing is just time management, um, being able to plan like when your comps are versus like when your assignments are due and like make a schedule, like figure out how you wanna go about that, like co communicate with like your professors and like let them know what's going on, like try to find ways to meet with them outside of office hours, et cetera. Uh, but I think the biggest thing was like working through something like ATS, like being on an executive board for a competition and also being on a dance team. Like it teaches you a lot of those like skills that are very valuable in like your future life as well. Like being on a dance team, it teaches you how to work in a team. And that's like something that you can talk about in interviews and like planning something like ATS, which is like, like over 500 dancers attend that. Like that's handling a large scale event. Um, and that really helps you be successful in pursuing career opportunities and when you interview when you go to career fairs like you can really draw on these experiences and they're like oh wow like this is a strong leader right here um so even though there were some drawbacks from being on this dance team whether it was like academically or however um i feel like what i gained from these experiences was a lot greater than that yeah, some really good points. Thank you. Um, I know with like all of the opportunities that you guys opportunities that you guys talked about, they do take time and it is sometimes hard to um, manage that with academics. So that was super helpful. Um, but thank you. So thank you, Saloni, Mansi Nihar, and Juhi for all sharing your experiences. Um, if you are attending this webinar right now, definitely feel free to ask them more specific questions in the breakout rooms after. I know they all have a lot to share. Um, so thank you again. Um, and now let's move on to opportunities, specifically professional ones that you can get involved in. Yeah.
Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So um, in terms of college opportunities, Solmil, Julie, and Rushi, you guys are all in very diverse uh, career fields. So we'd like for you guys to talk a little bit about the paths that you guys are pursuing post-college and also how you came to the decision of what career field that you're pursuing and the pre-professional organizations that you um, chose to help determine this. So Solmil, if you want to go ahead and start. Yeah, sure. Um, so I be going into management consulting when I graduate this June. That, um, for those of you who aren't super familiar with it, is basically um, the process of helping give advice to companies on how to move forward with the next big decisions that they're facing. Um, and so that wasn't really a career field that I knew existed when I entered college. Um, but over the course of the last couple of years, I was able to see a lot of different things both in the classroom and outside through extracurricular opportunities um, with the world of like nonprofits, with startups, um, in finance, et cetera. And that helped me kind of figure out that, you know, being able to see a wide range of opportunities is something that really appeals to me. Um, and I found consulting to be the best thing for that. Um, and then with respect to extracurricular opportunities, um, I involved with a couple different organizations on campus. A few of them are more business related than others, but I think in terms of helping figure out what your interests are, as well as like where you might want to take them after college, um, working with your career services office, as well as with friends that are juniors or seniors, or a couple years that are older than you at least, um, was really helpful for me specifically, um, because it helped me learn like, you know, what do different people in different career fields actually do? Um, do they like their jobs? Do they not? Um, what is something that I may be interested in and how can I learn about different things that I may not know even exist um, to see if I'm interested in them? Um, and I found that to be really helpful um, for myself. Awesome. Um, and just to follow up with that, what kind of pre-professional opportunities did you have um, come across your path, such as research or shadowing or internships um, throughout college? And how did you find those and prepare for them and end up securing them? You want me to answer that? Yes, please. Okay, sure. Um, so I, I've had a couple. So my, the summer after my freshman year, I was able to um, get an internship at shoes.com, which is a shoe retailer that sells shoes, as you could probably imagine. Um, and that was a opportunity that I actually was fortunate to get through my family. And that was a really cool way to learn about, you know, how do people in the business world work? And that was my first real exposure to it. But I think for those of you that are freshmen in college or thinking about going into college, I don't think having something your freshman year is that big of a concern. I, for the first eight weeks of the summer, I was a camp counselor and I thought I learned a lot. I learned a lot in the in those eight weeks that um, I thought was also really applicable to everything that I've done since. Um, but then after that, um, the summer after my sophomore year, um, I worked with our career services department to get a co-op opportunity at a startup. And that was really cool. Worked there for about six months and learned a lot about, you know, how businesses work and how different areas of the world um, kind of look like from a business perspective. Um, and that was really what piqued my interest in wanting to pursue something a little bit more along the lines of business. Um, and then my sophomore fall, I um, joined a club called Campus Catalyst, which provides uh, nonprofit consulting to organizations in the Evanston, which is where Northwestern is based area. And from there, I was able to see that, you know, being able to take the knowledge that you've gotten in the classroom and outside of the classroom, as well as your overall life experiences to help an organization that wants to make the world a better place was something that was really powerful for me to realize. Um, and that was what kind of got me interested specifically in consulting. And then, um, as I said, like talking to people in the business fraternity that I'm in at, on campus about, you know, how does consulting work? How does that world kind of operate was how I ended up kind of pivoting toward that, toward that space. Awesome. Great to hear that from you. Um, so Julie, I'd like to ask you the same question. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the path that you're pursuing? Um, I know that you are no longer in college. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about that and how you came to the decision of pursuing that. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I went to the University of Maryland College Park for undergrad and I graduated in 2018 with a major in um, neuroscience and a minor in business. And 
uh, how I came to pursuing, I'm currently a first year student in medical school and how I came to pursuing medicine, honestly, nothing else really interested me enough or captured my attention enough. And I always really liked the science classes in like high school and stuff like that. But obviously the route to taking, uh, to going into medical school is a little bit different um, because you do have to be on top of your academics. You do have to be on top of, um, it's, yeah, you do really have to be on top of your academics as well as, you know, research shadowing and all of those things as well. Um, I think some of the pre-professional organizations that help me determine, um, a lot of it is just reaching out to, um, a lot of it is just like reaching out to professors, reaching out to uh, working with all of your undergrad professors who teach you your basic science classes because there are a certain number of like basic science classes that you do have to go through. Um, and a lot of it is just reaching out to your professors and reaching out to um, just asking them about different opportunities and different areas that you can research in or different areas that you know you need help in and working with them. Um, I did, I mean, I did a lot of different things, so I can go on and ask, can I just like start with the research and shadowing because I feel like it'll yeah, overlap. Course. Okay, yes. so as for researching, um, that's definitely one of the things that you need for almost any healthcare field. So again, a lot of a misconception that a lot of medical students have, I feel like, is that you have to research and do like pipetting or you have to research and like work with animals. And that's definitely not true. Coming from a Jane background, I definitely did not feel comfortable working with, you know, dissecting animals or dissecting mice and doing like the basic stuff that a lot of people have in their minds of what pre-med students do. So I actually did research and got published for um, doing neuroaudiology research. And what I did is, honestly, you can go and do research in any department. It can be like econ research. It could be, um, you know, anything with public health research because that's a really developing field too. So I would recommend going onto like your school site and be like Department of Public Health, you know, University of so-and-so and just look on the, um, the, all the professors that teach in that field, even if you've never had them before, it takes a lot of trial and error and you do have to reach out to at least like 15 to 20, 30, maybe 40 professors before you, maybe three or four might email back to you. Um, but that was definitely something that I highly recommend that you do. It does take a lot of patience and I would start like probably your freshman year, um, like end of your freshman year, so that you do have something to work on. Because I started my end of my freshman year and over the course of three years, I was able to get a publication in. Um, as for shadowing opportunities, the best way to do that, I feel like is it's hard to just, you know, a lot of doctors don't check their emails. A lot of like PAs don't really check. They have busy emails, they have different work emails or they have different practice emails. Um, so what I would do is, or what I did at least, either if your friends, parents are doctors, or if you're like uh, teachers or have people um, that are doctors, or if your parents go to certain doctors, I would just reach out to them and tag on to them. And then maybe they might have a specific, um, they, they will be the easiest person and networking will be the easiest way that you can reach out to people to get opportunities and shadowing. Um, and just be like, hey, can I come in and just see what you do in the in your you know pediatrician's office for one day, or can I just come in and see what you do in your neurologist's office for a week or something over the summer? And a lot of doctors are very very supportive of this. Um, and then I also scribed in undergrad um, during my undergraduate education as well. So there's a lot of different paths that people take, and that's the biggest thing that. In medicine, it's not just like a set, like you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. There's a lot of different majors that you can do and there's a lot of different paths that you can do. So scribing really gave me um, a good experience too on just, it gave me a lot of letters of recommendations for medical school when I was applying because you really establish, I scribed for two years and you really establish like a really strong bond with your, um, with your peers and like all the people that you work with because they also go on to amazing nursing programs or amazing PA programs or amazing medical schools. Um, and also the doctors that are that you work with, they're mostly really well established in their field at this point. So they also give you a really good like, foundation to what the field of medicine is and why you wanna keep on doing it. Um, 
So a lot of it is just like trial and error. And also I think the biggest thing I want to say is like, it's not just doing the basic medicine is more than just like, you know, dissecting frogs or dissecting mice and then like, you know, doing surgery and stuff like that. A lot of it, there's a lot of different things that you can do, um, whether it's in the public health sector, whether it's like in the administrative sector, where, whether it's in, um, you know, just like the emergency room, like typical medicine setting, there's a lot of different things that you can do. So if you have more opportunities on, or if you have any more questions on like any field of healthcare, honestly, uh, could definitely throw them in the chat room. I'd be willing to answer them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. There are so, so many healthcare fields. You're absolutely right. It's a very, very diverse career path. Um, so I know that that's definitely a big topic of um, career field interest. Um, okay, awesome. So Rishi, um, same question. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about the path that you are pursuing post-college and how you came to the decision of what you'd like to be pursuing and also what pre-professional organizations helped you come to this decision? Yeah, yeah. so um, my name's Rishi. I'm a computer science and math senior at uh, the University of Texas at Austin. So just to give you a bit of an overview, I've done computer science research um, all four years in at university and I highly recommend that. So I can talk a little bit about that. I did a traditional software engineering internship my freshman year. I did like a foreign software engineering internship uh, at Amazon Japan my sophomore year. My junior year, I did research over the summer at UT. And um, next year I'll be going to Harvard Law School. Um, so there was like a lot of, I think, I definitely had a lot of variety in the things that I did in my undergraduate experience. And I think that that's like something I would definitely recommend. Um, if you're interested in something, try to get involved and see how it fits. And if it fits well, then that's really exciting. And if not, then you should not be afraid to kind of like switch gears a little bit. So just to give a short overview, um, I think every field is really, really different. So whenever you're getting advice, really try to seek out people who are in your field to give you advice because hearing advice from someone in like a medical field will not really help you in an engineering field and vice versa. So um, I can speak a little bit about engineering um, and computer science in particular. I think career services at each of the universities that you'll be attending will be really robust and give you the best information about how recruiting works on your campus for internships over the summer. So I would kind of just hang tight until you get to your university and then keep your ear on the ground, talk to the people who are doing like resume reviews and stuff like that. Um, at least in computer science, I think most internships are obtained through applying online after you have your like, career fair at your university or after you've had your resume reviewed. So there's not much you can do until you get to college for that. Um, in terms of research, I definitely think you should get involved in research in computer science if you're interested in grad school as soon as possible. Um, and basically the way you do that is you talk to the professors who are teaching your computer science classes and they will be doing some research in some field. You can just Google them and see what that field is, find the ones that you're interested in and reach out to them in person. Um, research is pretty uncommon in computer science, I would say. So they will be pretty excited about the concept of having kind of undergraduates working with them. And they might just want to see like some expertise in the field or something. But if you're persistent, I think they'll definitely be on board with that. And then I highly recommend that if you're considering grad school in computer science, then you do research over one of the summers. And I think a freshman year summer is a really good time to do that because it'll be harder to get a software engineering internship freshman year. So research freshman year will help you both in potentially going to grad school, figuring out if research is good for you and helping you get a software engineering internship the next year. Um, and then in, so another extracurricular I did, which kind of might explain my post-grad plans is I did Texas Votes, which is a nonpartisan civic engagement organization. Um, I did a lot of work like registering people to vote and stuff like that. And I found that I was very interested in kind of civic engagement more broadly. And that um, the connections that I made in that organization and kind of the people that I talked to convinced me that I wanted to apply to law school. And so I kind of pivoted a little bit away from computer science and applied to law school. But I applied to law school as a computer science person um, in like, techno -law, like technology and law. So maybe that's, uh, you want to play to your strengths, but still pivot if you're interested in doing that. Um, I can answer any follow-up questions, but that was kind of like a broad overview about everything I did.
Yeah, that was really great. Um, definitely really interesting to see like an intersection between both technology and um, law. So do you, I think you pretty much covered the basis of like shadowing and internships that you have, but did you want to add on to any more about um, how you were able to secure those opportunities? Yeah, so uh, for research, okay, so for internships, it's, there's a pretty standard process. There's so many internships that go to computer science people that like, I think that there's so much information out there if you just Google like how to get a computer science internship. Um, the gist of it is basically that there will be technical interviews that you can study for and you apply online, you get an interview, you do the interview, you get the internship. Pretty straightforward and there's not really anything else that goes into it. Um, research is really different. It's really professor specific and it's really university specific. If you're going to a large research, in, like large research university, which a lot of state schools would be or a lot of larger universities would be, then there are going to be professors out there doing graduate level research but, and they will have PhD students and you're basically just asking to be like the P it's the professor then the PhD student and you're asking to be underneath the PhD student kind of like doing work for everybody above you. Um, and I think it's really valuable and it's kind of hit or miss you'll either like it or you won't. And even if you don't like it, I would say consider switching groups consider switching projects uh, consider that like maybe that wasn't the right fit for you, but research writ large might still be the right fit for you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and thank you so much, so Samuel and Julie as well for sharing um, about the opportunities and that you guys have come across and how that's helped you um, pick your career path and shaped your decisions for your career goals. Um, so if you guys have any more questions, we will definitely have our breakout rooms for that. Um, there are so, so many career fields um, and going into college, it's really easy for you to think maybe that you're dead set on going into this and maybe by the end of, end of the first semester of your freshman year, you might wanna change it. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, figuring out what career field you want to go to is a process. Um, and we'll definitely have our, um, we'll definitely have a good discussion time for you guys to ask more questions about that. Um, so now I'm gonna hand it off to Charmy to talk, to introduce the topic of staying connected to Jainism. Yeah, thank you, Dara. And thank you again, um, Samuel, Julie, and Rishi, that was super helpful. Um, so going to college brings a lot of changes um, and sometimes it's hard being away from home and family while staying connected to our culture, families, and Jainism. Um, so we just wanted to take some time for our last section to be specifically about staying connected to Jainism and we have Sid and Rhea here today with us for that. So thank you all. Um, so Sid, starting off with you, um, we know that there's no youth Jain organization at AM um, and that you live in kind of like a college city that's not in close proximity to a song. So how do you practice Jainism day-to-day -day life um, during Pajushan, that selection, or just other Jain holidays in general? Yeah, thanks, Charmy. Um, yeah, it, it was an adjustment for sure, switching to college, um, especially when um, there weren't a lot of Jain people, especially not at a and as I was used to, like maybe in Houston, right? Um, so I guess the first thing was uh, my freshman year going into college. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I did was um, I did try to actively seek out some of the Jane people at um, Texas A&M, just so I had kind of a community to start off with. Um, we started a group chat and I think it was like four people, maybe five people, uh, pretty small admittedly and not the most active group chat, but, um, and, and that was okay. Honestly, just having that, having someone to say like, happy Maver Jane D2 or, um, you know, finding out what are some of the vegetarian friendly restaurants in College Station. It was still helpful to have that group and just that basis. And, you know, believe it or not, slowly over the course of three or four years, um, we now have 30 to 40 people in that group chat and it's a lot more active. Um, we've had national dinners regularly now for the past three or four years in College Station. We've had small events throughout the year. So it's really grown. And I think that, you know, even though at first it seemed like it was a very small group and that maybe it would be really difficult. I, I think just starting off with even three or four people really led to something I could count on over the course of four years. Um, to your question about practicing um, Jain holidays, right? The selection, uh Again, it, it was different. I able to go to the temple um, every day uh, with that meditation, being able to observe some of the fasts, like, you know, Egashno or Uplas. But admittedly, it was really hard in college. Um, being on a Ross team, too, it wasn't easy for me to just not eat for a day. 
um, it, it would take a toll on my body. So, um, and I also, first year living in the dorm, it wasn't easy for me to just make food fresh every day. So I had to make a compromise somewhere. Uh, I think going into college, just if I could say something to all the seniors or people that are looking to go to college, um, just because you aren't able to follow Jainism to the exact same extent that you were before doesn't mean that you're any less of a Jain or that, you know, you aren't practicing properly. I, I think it's commendable and respectable to try your best to do as much as you can. And I think that's the most that any of us can do. So um, definitely kind of keep that in mind as you try to find new options and look for ways to still practice Jainism in your daily life. So some of the ways that I did that included, um, like I said, I was not too, too far away from home, I, about an hour away. So during the selection, my parents were able to actually give me some food. Um, and on top of that, though I couldn't do uplas or fast as I usually would, I tried to do little things, um, you know, not walking on grass, as little as that might sound, or um, avoid drinking soda or like limiting my consumption. Little things like that that I kept in the back of my mind allowed me to just stay true to the concepts of Jainism and Parishan and those holidays. And sure enough, like some of those things have stuck with me and I still try not to do some of those things even today. So really just try to do as much as you can. There are options. It takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, but it can be done. And find your support system. If you're going to a college city that's not close to home, find the song that is close to that city. Um, YJ has done a really good job of building up that network. So use YJ as a leverage to find people and make the most of it. Yeah, thank you so much, Sid. All great advice. Um, I think, as you said, it's all about your intentions and it's definitely adjustment of like how you do that. Um, but I really like how you shared about like how that group message now has grown. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where like if you don't find something on campus or if it's not there, like you can always start it um, and be that leader. So that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Rhea, so I know that your involvement with the UC Berkeley Jane's organization has been definitely in contrast to Sid, where it's been a bigger organization um, and helped you stay close to your Jane roots despite being physically far away from home and your Jane community. Um, so has there ever been a time where that you felt homesick and how did you get through it? And in general, could you talk about your involvement with UC Berkeley's Jane organization as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that the context for me like entering college was that I've grown up in Massachusetts my entire life and decided to go to college in California on the other side of the of the country not knowing anyone else in school and so it wasn't until like a month or two in that I realized that I really missed um, a lot of those family friend groups and bachelor friends and uh, just the just the community that I had growing up and it's one of those things that you might take for granted when you're actually living at home, like, oh, my parents are forcing me to go to another family friend party. Um, once you're in college, it was one of those things that I realized that um, I actually really missed. And that was such a formative part of my identity. So the funny story was that, you know, we were looking for a community like this. Um, wasn't yet on campus, but we knew that there was a lot of Jane students there, given um, how big my school was. And so I was in a class and I met um, my friend Harika Jane and I heard her last name and immediately I started smiling and I asked like, oh, are you also Jane? Um, and it was such an awkward first interaction, but I think that was what led to the start of Jane Students Organization because we, we realized that there were so many other people on campus like us that also were feeling homesick or missing that community. And so what started out as just, you know, bringing a group of people together and forming that community on campus really grew into a family like, I think I've met some of my best friends in college and in life through the organization, and it just gave us a platform to not only, like, have our, each other's backs, you know, have friends to go to Garba with, et cetera, but also give us a space to reflect on um, what was going on in college. Like, every week we would come together and have spiritual organ discussions. Um, it was just a wonderful way to take a step back. And I think one of the most beautiful things was that as time went on, our community of Jane Students Association grew from just Jane students. And so by the end, you know, there was actually a lot of people that were, you know, from different faiths and different backgrounds from all over the world, but we were still able to join together under this platform um, and still find that family with the same shared values, even though not all of us were even defined by the Jane label by birth. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think both your and Sid's stories are both 
really nice in that like you kind of came into a situation that wasn't probably ideal but it changed as time went and like I love that you both were able to do that so thank you for sharing um I know that you both were also involved with YJA during your time in college um so could you talk a bit more about your experience as a local representative subcommittee member board member convention committee member um whatever that might have included during college um so if you want to go first Sure. Um, yeah, I think I was very fortunate in that uh, I was, I applied for uh, South Regional Coordinator specifically my first year in college and was able to get that position. Um, it was, I guess, one other way for me to stay involved and stay connected to Jainism while giving back to the community that had given me so much, right? Um, I think being a part of board or even being an LR or a subcommittee member uh, it's nice because, you know, I didn't know some of the Jane people in College Station or honestly, even in Houston until I became an LR and I was like, oh, um, I didn't know you were Jane, but let's become friends. And so it's a really good way kind of indirectly to meet people in your region or in your city or in your college for that matter. So I would de definitely recommend joining um, the local representative team or a subcommittee team that interests you. And it, it just makes it that much easier for you to connect uh, and again, stay involved with, with what's going on in Jainism. And then I guess second year of college, I applied again to be on board and I was involved in the convention planning process. So I got to see a whole other side of YJA and um, again, Jane youth involvement throughout the country. Great, thank you for that. Um, and Rhea, if you just wanted to add on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was involved in convention committee my freshman year, um, and I think that that was uh, such a cool experience because, again, it helped me find this whole new community of people that were really passionate about the same things. And being so far away from home, I think it was such a great support system to have, um, as well as from a learning standpoint, there's so much that goes into everything that YJA does and like huge props to everyone who's involved. But I think there's so many cool like, professional opportunities as well in terms of learning, you know, how to put on an entire convention or how to run so many events and build such a strong community. Um, and then in my sophomore year, I was also involved as a regional coordinator for the West region. And like Sid said, it helped me meet so many cool people that were living in the same area as me that I wouldn't have gotten the chance to meet otherwise. Um, and again, I would highly, highly recommend it as an experience, I think. The people that you meet, the the platform that it gives you to sort of share your values and create community is all really precious and a very unique opportunity that um, I think is really hard to come by in other places. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, both of you guys, for sharing that. Um, while we are talking about YJ, Mansi, could you also tell us more about the Jaina Scholarship and your work with that? Yeah, definitely. So I've also been really heavily involved with YJA over the last few years, but I also um, have been interested in getting more involved with Jaina because I think that um, having our perspective as younger people can also bring um, some new ideas to the work that Jaina is doing. Um, and so currently we're, we've actually launched a academic scholarship. So this is for current seniors in high school who are going to be entering into college in the fall as well as current college students. Um, so I'm actually going to send a link in the chat um, afterwards for the web page and the application form, um, but your parents or if you're signed up for Jaina emails, you might also be receiving an email um, soon. And so it's essentially to um, help support financially for students um, for college education. Yeah, and so I think if you have any questions about that or if you are looking to get more involved with the Jane community in, in some capacity, even beyond YJA, there are lots of opportunities within Jaina as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that this topic is definitely something that all of us have thought about and is super relevant to all of us in the Jane community. So that was super helpful. Um, thank you so much, um, Sid, Rhea, and Mansi for sharing. Um, so now we're going to take the time to conclude just in general. So I'm going to give it to Dara. Yes, awesome. And thank you again, Mansi, Sid, and Rhea for telling us um, about balancing Jainism in college. Um, so thank you guys so much. We really want to thank all of the panelists for taking the time today to share their experiences with all of us. Your insight and wisdom have been invaluable to all of us. 
Um, so the next thing, um, we will be now setting up the breakout rooms on Zoom and sending you guys a Google form in the chat that asks you which breakout room you'd like to join first. Um, the options are campus life, involvement, professional opportunities, and staying connected to Jainism, as well as um, some quick feedback that is also included on the Google form. Um, we will also then put you guys in those breakout rooms based on that selected answer. And once you're placed in that breakout room, you are not locked in there forever. Do not worry. You're free to stay for as long as you'd like. And to switch to a different room, simply click return to the lobby button at the bottom of your screen. And then once you're in the lobby, we can then assign you and move you to a different breakout room. And you can switch from breakout rooms as much as you want. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Dara, for explaining that. So Bunsu sent the Google form in the chat. So if you all could just fill that out really quick, um, she will put you into those rooms. Um, but while we are doing that and you guys are filling out the Google form, um, we just want to take some time to let each of our panelists, I guess just for the fun of it, share kind of their one lesson that they've learned so far in college or like one last piece of advice um to everyone here today um so that could be whatever you guys want it to be it doesn't have to be under the topic that you all talked about because i know there's a lot that you guys could share um so i guess we could just start in the order that we've been going through this webinar it with so shale do you want to go first yeah um so i'd say the biggest piece of advice i can give is once we get to college there's going to be a lot of different stresses and commitments that are going to be hitting us from all angles so just really try to find your niche, uh, whether it's a large campus town or it's a large city that you're in. Uh, find things that make you happy, whether it's just, you know, setting some time every Wednesday night and having Waffle Wednesdays with your best friends or going for a little day hike on Sunday and watching the sunrise. Um, just, just really find your niche, find a group of people that make you happy and can, you know, alleviate some of that stress because it's going to be there and just, just making, just finding something that's going to make you smile is going to make the whole experience a lot better for you. Thank you. Um, Bumika? Um, so I'd say college is a time to like really build yourself up. And so like I'd say put everything you can into doing well. Also have a lot of fun, like make friends, join clubs, go to things, like go to events and stuff, really like enjoy that. And then also be careful about who you surround yourself with. Don't keep toxic people around. It's not high school. You don't have to pretend you like someone. If someone's not for you, they're not for you. You just cut them out. So make sure to do that. <laughs> Thank you for the very real advice. Um, Juhi, do you want to go? Yeah, so I think I'd say go into everything with an open mind. Um, and yeah, like like everyone said, like really try to find those experiences and also keep in mind, like even though like grades are obviously a huge thing, um, a lot of the times like the experiences that you have val like have a lot more value, especially when you're talking to like recruiters and like when you're interviewing, et cetera. So make sure that you're actually able to like set aside think she cut out but we will come back to her um when her wi-fi comes back um in the meanwhile nihar do you want to go yeah um i guess one piece of advice that i'd give um is just get comfortable being uncomfortable um definitely take all the opportunities that you can to interact with new people um new faces develop a global perspective um and just learn from your peers. Um, most of your learning is going to take place outside of the classroom. And so really just revel in that. Um, you're going to be surrounded by so many diverse perspectives and um, people who have had very different upbringings from you. And that in and of itself is a really tremendous experience. So um, take from your peers, give to them, um, and just remember like, to be a good person at the end of the day. Thank you for that. Um, Mansi and then Saloni. Yeah, one of my biggest pieces of advice is to learn how to prioritize your own personal wellness. Um, I think that's super important in college because 
you know, there is still a lot going on. You're going to feel like you want to be involved in so many things um, in addition to academics. Um, so if for you, you know, it looks different for everybody. For me, it was finding time to um, work out a few times a week or um, sit down and relax when I'm eating a meal. Um, you know, we walk to classes and, and take time to really, you know, um, to relax a little bit and get away from the stress that often comes with being an active college student. Um, so yeah, that's my one piece of advice to really uh, try to prioritize personal well-being so that you can bring the best version of yourself to everything that you're doing. Hi, so I would say one thing is to document your highs and lows, whether that's through journaling or video form, just because um, it's gonna be easy to forget, because like, like everything, college is temporary, so you might forget how much you've grown from freshman year if you don't have a reflection of yourself just for yourself to see that. And then also, if you don't believe in yourself, you're robbing the world of what you can achieve. So, got to believe in yourself. I love that from both of y'all. Thank you both. Um, and then going back to Juhi, if you want to finish kind of like what you were saying earlier. Yeah, so I'm not sure what part you guys heard, but basically just go into everything with an open mind. And in college, like, Grades are important, but make sure you give as much importance to all of these other experiences, whether they're academic experiences, social experiences, because a lot of the times, like, those are the experiences that will help you grow into the person that you want to become. So it's, like, really important to be able to spend time to spend time on those as well. Thank you. Okay, um, before moving on, I'm just going to bump the Google form again. So make sure you're filling it out for the breakout room that you want to go into um, so that we can place you correctly. But... Moving on, um, Somil, do you want to share? Yeah, I think that college is really the best time for you to discover what your passions and interests are. And so kind of along the lines of what a lot of other people have said already, I think it's really important for you to try to expand your horizons and try, try out for that, um, that drumming club, try out for the radio station, try out for a business fraternity or whatever it is that you think could be a way for you to expand your horizons and the things that you've seen or may want to see. Um, I think that by the time that you graduate and have finished your four years or, or however long you spend in college, I think that you really won't regret being able to have those opportunities because um, I think co like college is great in terms of like being able to learn a lot of great things, but it's also great because of the memories that you have and a big part of those memories come from the experiences you have in clubs and with the friends that you make in them. Super true. Thank you for sharing. Um, Julie, do you want to go? Yeah, um, I think one of my biggest things um, is just like coming from a health, uh, like a pre-med or like a healthcare background is um, it's good to look up to your peers and always like, you know, look up to them for advice and see what your friends are doing or see what people older than you are doing. But it's um, just try not to compare yourself to them all the time because college is really hard. Pre-med is really hard. Um, not everyone has the same route going into medical school. There's like a lot of different things and a lot of different like things that you can be involved with to go into med school. So just look, don't compare yourself because it's hard as it is. College is hard as it is. Pre-med is hard as it is. So don't be so hard. It's going to be really hard if you're also hard on yourself of like, oh, you know, so-and-so is doing this many clubs. Why am I not doing this many clubs? Or so-and-so is doing this much, like, you know, they've been getting A's in all of their classes. Why am I not getting A's? And another thing I would just say, it's like um, to be well-rounded, like everyone else has been saying, like you will have time to have fun and do academics at the same time. Um, and, you know, be involved with YJACC. I was involved with YJACC during one of my lesser um, stressful years during college. And then also one more thing um, for pre-med, it's really stereotypical for them to be like, you know, a straight A student in high school and then like straight A student later on. Um, I think that that stereotype is not really um, necessary. Coming in from high school to college, a transition is really hard. So it's okay to fail. It's okay to get a B. It's okay to get a C, even as a pre-med, pre-engineering, whatever field you're in. Just like learn from your, all of your mistakes that you make. So it, I think that's the biggest thing too, that it's okay to fail and just learn as long as you learn from it. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that's definitely very applicable to like a lot of us, I feel like. So thank you. Um, Rishi, do you want to go? Yeah. So um, a kibbutz that my family would always say is Jetai Saramatetai, which is like basically everything that happens is a good thing. So I just really try to go into everything with that mindset and like really try to see the positive in everything and make the best out of every situation. So 
like the worst grade I got in college was my first semester of uh, freshman year. I tried out for the rock climbing team freshman year, didn't make it, tried out again the next year and made it on. I tried out for every single dance team at the end of my sophomore year, didn't make it on any of them, and then tried out again junior year and made it on and had a lot of fun. Um, and then I tried to like get research published for the first two years. Uh, it didn't work until junior year and then junior and senior year I got like two different papers published. So just like really be as persistent with everything as you can and take everything in stride and like go with the flow and everything is going to turn out really well and everything that's happening right now is just like the best case scenario. And if you keep that attitude, then like you'll realize that the world is really conspiring to help you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, definitely stay positive through it all. It all happens for a reason. I love the way you put that. Thank you. Um, Sid, do you want to go? Sure. Um, yeah, I think along the same lines, uh, failure is a privilege in a weird way in that you learn a lot from your mistakes. Um, I would say, at least I remember being a senior in high school, don't be afraid of college. Um, I know it's, it can be uncomfortable and it's something that is very new and probably very different from what you're used to. Um, but don't be afraid of it. Uh, be fearless. Look at it as an opportunity um, and be grateful for the fact that you have a chance to find out who you are, what your passions are and um, what really drives you. I think like a lot of people said, college is um, a time of growth. It's a time of realizing exactly what it is that you want to do um, for really the rest of your life. Um, and also just one thing that I learned that I, I hold really valuable is time management and organization. Um, they come with practice. Start early, um, be very proactive in that sense, um, and then lead by example. Great, thank you for sharing. Um, one last time, I'm just gonna bump the form again. Make sure you fill that out for breakout rooms. Um, and then, Rhea, do you wanna go? Yeah, sure. Um, I think when you hear all of this, um, my, my biggest advice would be please don't get overwhelmed. I know there's so much going on in college and you know, you're thinking about friends to meet, what classes to take, what internship opportunities you should be thinking about, what career path you wanna go in and um, just to echo what others have said is that everyone has their own journey and their own path and no two people's paths are going to look the same. Um, it's not like high school where people are kind of doing the same clubs or taking the same classes. Everyone has a truly different story. And for those reasons, you know, everyone's going to make a different impact on the world and just go with the flow and allow yourself to learn and absorb wherever you can. Um, college is one of those things that you're going to get out of it as much as you put into it. And so pushing yourself outside the comfort zone, um, talking to people you wouldn't have otherwise talked to, those are all gonna be enriching experiences for you. Um, and just think about what, what a privilege it is, you know, to be surrounded by some of the most brilliant people in the world, wherever you go to college, um, and really like savor that opportunity and that privilege to, to make the best of that experience and try to do as much as you can to uplift yourself, your community, um, and the rest of the world. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much again, all of you guys. Um, that was all really good advice. And I know things that I wish I had heard before going to college as well. So that was really helpful. Um, just again, a reminder to fill out the breakout room form um, and so that we can place you. I think we're all ready from that end as well. So what we're going to be doing now is you will be getting a message on your screen that's like join breakout room and it'll say a number. Um, and that's basically the one that you've signed up for and you will meet your panelists there and you'll be able to answer and ask any questions on a more conversational level more directly um, and just learn more. And then at any point, if you wanna switch breakout rooms at the bottom of your screen, there's a button that says leave or that return to lobby. And then there, when you come back, you can be like, oh, can I go to this room instead? Um, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to put that in the chat. Um, otherwise, I think we should be good now. All right, I am opening up the breakout rooms. Um, 